Hold on. You drive like a crazy person. I honestly thought I was going to die as Uncle Bill tore through the trees in the truck that was, honestly, almost too big for the road. I know! Uncle Bill joked that we were hard as, I don't know, it was some fucked up alien tank or whatever it was. It had a hell of a suspension, rolling over rocks and logs with barely a bump. And just like that, we were out of the strip of woods and back on the road. This time, across the guardrail, the ground dropped away in a steep hill, and coming up was another checkpoint. Hold on to something! Uncle Bill yelled as he slammed on the gas. Some of the Chauvanti soldiers scattered. Others opened fire before running for it as the truck smashed on through. One bounced off the hood before flopping to a stop in the middle of the road. The crab tank thing, on the other hand, slammed right through as well. Well, that was enough for Uncle Bill. He hit the brakes, spinning the truck around and gunning it right towards the tank. What the hell are you doing? I yelled as the tank got closer and closer. What the hell are you... At the last moment, Uncle Bill jerked the wheel, zooming to the left of the tank. The driver must have been distracted. The eight-wheel vehicle busted through the guardrail with a quick swerve and rolled down the hill. Uncle Bill skidded to a stop, and we observed the wreck below. The chassis was badly bent, and a fuel line must have been broken or something. A fire had started. We should probably get going. I could imagine what would happen once the fire spread. Yep! Uncle Bill got back in the truck. I followed as the fire started to smell. Whoever was still in there was probably done for. Uncle Bill must not have had time to observe, because he turned back around and drove the other way. It was then that I saw the dashboard. The check engine light was on, and the gas read less than a quarter tank. More like an eighth tank. Dude, I think you need to get gas. Uncle Bill looked at his gas gauge. No kidding! Guess I wore out the old girl! I could almost imagine my uncle giving his truck a pat on the hood like a horse. The image made me chuckle. What's so funny? I explained exactly what I was imagining. I was treated to a hard breath out of Uncle Bill's nose. Okay now. Know where to find a gas station? Okay, yeah. Let's see, that's Misery Lane there. Make a left, then a right on Poplar Road, and it'll take you to the gas station just off 97. The Gas and Grill. That old place had been my first job. Probably Uncle Bill's first job too. We both knew exactly how to get there. And what do you know? We got to the gas station perfectly fine. Except even from all the way up the street, we could see it was crawling with Shilvanti. Shit. Um, I pinched the bridge of my nose. This was a bad idea. Hold on. See that car there? It was a red car right on the edge of the property. I could get there from the truck. Yeah? You ever siphon gas before? Uncle Bill rooted for his bag and pulled out a plastic tube. I, uh, uh, I mean, truth be told, I had never done that and Uncle Bill knew it. Don't worry, I'll keep them away from you. Just go get the gas. Here, take this. He pulled a set of radios out of the bag. I took one. All right. I grabbed the hose and the jerry can and hopped out. Uncle Bill got up in the tree with a rifle. Any chance of taking the shotgun? I figured it was worth asking, but Uncle Bill shook his head. Not near a gas station. Well, I guess with that, I was off. I ran to the parked car fast as I could before sliding to a stop. All right, thread the tube into the gas tank. I did as the radio said. Pop in the gas cover and thread the tube down. I stuck one into my mouth and sucked. And spat the gas back into the can as soon as I could. That shit was vile. It was like steamed carrots, but spicy. I gagged long after the gas left my mouth. With a shudder that slowly calmed back down, I sucked some more and, what do you know, it wasn't as bad the second time. Unfortunately, I heard Uncle Bill on the radio. I think you've been spotted. Hold on. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. A shot rang out, and I could see soldiers taking cover and looking around. A little while later, Uncle Bill spoke up again. Had to change position. Keep sucking. This distraction won't last forever. Shit. They saw me talking on the radio. Run! Run! Well, that did it. I bolted, mentally cringing when I heard one of the Shilvanti yelling. With that fate awaiting me, I ran through the door, diving behind the counter, which turned out to be a bad idea. I was cornered. Looking around feverishly, I grabbed the first thing my fingers closed on, a meat cleaver. Someone upstairs must have been looking out for me. But I couldn't celebrate for long. I heard the alien coming. Ugh, where to go? I wouldn't fit under the table. Perfect! 
I tore open the fridge, throwing out the stuff inside before climbing in, stepping over sacks of frozen fries. It's a big walk-in fridge, okay? And not a minute too soon, the alien was in the kitchen. She? Yeah. With curves and boobs like that. The Mars alien was most definitely a she. Reached her hand under the tables and in the fridges, obviously looking for that pesky insurgent as she said something in a sing-song voice. I didn't need a magic alien translator to know she was saying something like, Come out, come out, little alien. My heart just about stopped as I saw the hand. The alien reached in, filling around for the light switch. It was only a matter of time till she found me. I had an idea. Let's see. What was a nice heavy swing in here? Ah! I picked up a massive sack of jalapeno peppers and swung it, smashing the soldier's arm against the wall. Fast as I could, I swung the cleaver in my other hand, cutting off the top half of her hand. Her fingers and a good chunk of the hand behind the knuckles fell, dangling by a shred of skin. The tip of her thumb fell to the floor, splashing bright blue blood everywhere. It took a moment for the Shilvanti to start screaming, almost as if her brain needed a bit to process this. When she did start, though, she sounded surprisingly human. I could imagine the tears as I heard her crying. I felt awful. When we'd be cat and mousing around the kitchen, she'd been the big scary alien I had to avoid at all costs. Now she was an injured girl, probably younger than me, screaming and crying in pain. Let her keep screaming, Uncle Bill said on the radio. The others will come to help. And now you can run. Good idea. I got the hell out of there as soon as I could. Even as I GTFO'd, I could see some of the others running in to help their hurt friend. I don't know if they saw me. A few gave chase. Yeah, they saw me as I burst through the door. Drop to the ground, Uncle Bill ordered over the radio. I did as he said, and two shots rang out. I would later come to understand that nothing but larger bullets and maybe armor-piercing bullets wouldn't get through Shulvanti body armor. But at the time, I was just mystified that the soldiers weren't dead. They were just clutching their wounds and groaning. I figured Uncle Bill had aimed to leave them alive. How nice of him. A few more shots rang out as I crawled away to the car. Just fucking keep shooting while I get the rest of the gas, I yelled into the radio. And that I did. I gritted my teeth, ignored the taste of the gas, the moaning of the Shilvanti soldiers, and my heart racing, and well, slowly but surely, I got it. Soon there was a decent amount of gasoline in the can. When I got back to the truck, I went to fill the tank straight away. Little as the tank read, it wasn't going anywhere else otherwise. Do you know what you did? Uncle Bell asked, making me jump a little. Where did he come from? What did I do? I asked, as I braced myself for a don't get yourself backed into a corner like that speech. You pulled off a decent bit of thinking on your feet and got yourself out of trouble. Did I? I suppose I did. That's going to come in handy if we ever have to fight the aliens. The, uh, what are they called, Shavanti? Yeah. I poured in the rest of the gas, but you helped me out a bunch. Suppose I did. But don't you ever let yourself get cornered like that again, okay? That's how your dad died. I dropped the jerry can. Uncle Bill had been, let's see, my dad's older brother's best friend growing up. It also been the first let mum and I know about the guys cornering dad in an alley and beating him to within an inch of his life. He wound up dying in the ICU. With that delightful thought, we got back in the truck and drove off. There's a bunch of cabins all for the woods, Uncle Bill explained as we pulled off the road and made our way into the woods. Some of these places are really elaborate too. Generators, shares with four-wheelers. I wasn't listening. My mind kept going back to the soldier I'd mutilated. Can we pull over real quick? I think I'm gonna throw up. Uncle Bill pulled to a stop and I stumbled out. Soon as my head was out the door it came loose, and the vomit stream narrowly missing the truck. I hadn't had anything to eat today. So after the first few spatters, I just dry heaved. Then I felt a hand on my back. It doesn't really get easier. Well, that was a relief. You just get numb to it. Uncle Bill sat me down. Well, that was a relief. I can't stop, just fuck. When I was in that fridge, she was just some alien soldier I had to fight off, but then I felt guilty, like I saw her as a person. God, I don't know what to think anymore. I could feel the nausea again. Hold on to that feeling, Uncle Bill said. Feeling guilty means you're still human. But there's no use worrying either. What's done is done. All the guilt in the world won't bring back the dead. Something about the way he was saying all this made me think he still regretted some of the things he did. 
But right now, we just have to concentrate on staying alive. Hold on. You hear that? I didn't hear anything. Was I going deaf or something? I think they followed us into the woods. Captain Rishi was not having a good day. All morning, she and her troops had been dealing with insurgents with, admittedly, poor results. First, there had been an incident with an old man and a boy. From what she'd seen, Private Kresdik had her arm pulled into their vehicle. Then the window had closed on her. That little incident had left her where she was now, explaining why insurgents now had Shulvanti weapons. From what we're hearing, Captain Rishi, those under your command are unable to deal with two insurgents? General Vri and most of the High Command had expected this to be an easy conquest. No, it's not. Rishi was fucked, and she knew it. Not even females. Males, for the Empress's sake. Males. An elderly male and one who's barely of age, Captain Rishi. If you are unable to deal with two males, perhaps you'd be better off somewhere else. The icebox, perhaps, or... We're dealing with them as we speak. Rishi elected not to mention the incident to the fueling station until later. The same two insurgents had stolen a container of the explosive liquid the people of this world use as fuel, and left half a bomb squad in the hospital in the process. One had even had a hand so badly mutilated, the rest of the thing had to be amputated and fitted for cybernetics. Captain Rishi was not looking forward to explaining to the girl's parents why their baby was now missing her right hand. We're chasing them into the forest, Captain Rishi explained. We've sourced a few Reeks handlers. The Reeks was a useful animal with a hell of a nose. They'd sniff out the insurgents.